Hi everybody, it's Susan Riley again from Education Closet and today I'm going to walk you through how to use ThingLink to create an arts integrated or STEAM uh, lesson. So ThingLink is definitely one of those tools online that I have fallen in love with and I can't wait to show you how easy it is to use. So you can use it as an educator and again have student accounts. They have uh, an education division of ThingLink that uh, you can definitely use or you can try out the free version uh, through thinglink.com and that's what I'm going to show you today but um, either side is great I think the education side gives you a lot more flexibility and the um, the opportunity to have students create their own thing links and then utilize those for portfolios for instance to kind of show growth over time and it gives them something that they can go back to over and over again and add to so it's a constantly evolving um, interactive piece for them that they can utilize again and again as they are learning different concepts over time. So today I'm going to show you how to use uh, ThingLink with an example of Alexander Calder and connecting with math and science. So um, just sit back, relax, and I'm going to show you a quick tour of using ThingLink for the arts integration or STEAM classroom. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I have ThingLink opened. All I did was go to ThingLink.com and I clicked on Create. It's a big plus sign right here. Um, and it will open this up for you. Now, I dragged in a uh, picture from um, Mobile um, and Sculptures from the 189.com of Calder's work because I wanted that to kind of be the backdrop. You can create this however you want. I have this labeled as a scavenger hunt for Calder. Uh, because I really want my students to go through this exhibit almost like a 3D experience and see each piece and kind of scavenge for more as they're learning and then add it as they go along. Um, but you could certainly use a map if you were studying um, how to utilize maps and art. You could have a map on here and then have artwork that you've inserted through the different tags across the way. This this piece here is endless. You could have student original work that you upload and it is so easy to upload. You literally just click on an upload for the background, find the file, and it brings it right up from the very beginning. All right, once you're in there, now comes the fun part. Now you get to go pick the links that you want to have in here and insert them over time. So I did a bunch of um, kind of scavenging before we got here. I found Mobile Maker from uh, the National Gallery for Art, um, nga.gov, and in their kids section, they have this interactive Mobile Maker so that you can attach different kinds of branches, different kinds of shapes, all kinds of different controls. I really like this. I think this is a great piece for my students. So all I'm gonna do is copy the link to this site and then I'm going to add it over here on my original thing link. So I'm going to come over here and let's see, I want to have this here. So all I do is click it and suddenly this little dot appears and then I can add the address right here um, for the mobile maker and add a text so that I know what it is. Mobile maker so that students can go ahead and play with that. And if I want to change the icon, I can too, so that it kind of goes with what I'm looking for. And I might want it to stand out a bit because um, very often, see how some of these look like they could almost belong to it. So um, I'm going to add this plus sign here so that students know that that's something you can click on. And notice that when you go to it and hover, this pops up so you know exactly where you're going to. Um, I can save that. That's great. Um, and then I can click anywhere else and go to add another tag. It's literally that easy. Now, the National Gallery of Art also has a Calder exhibition. They have a virtual tour that you can go on. And so each area of the exhibition has been filmed. So students could actually go on a tour of Calder's exhibition at the NGA. So I want to at attach that as well. So I might add that right here. 
Um, and then I'm going to add that address and go on a virtual tour. You can add any kind of text you want. So if students were doing a, um, a journal, for instance, they might want to use that um, instead. So they might just type about what they're learning about. My journal entry towards uh, learning about Calder. And it could link to a blog somewhere. You can have them link anything, anywhere, which is so fantastic. And then finally, I really um, like the book uh, Sandy Circus. And especially with little ones, but also I like to use it with older students so that they can look at the illustrations and kind of identify some things that they might not have seen before. So I found a video of someone reading Sandy Circus, and so I'd like to add that there as well. So I might go over here and have a reading section, uh, reading corner, and have and see how this pops up. Videos will automatically pop up. Other images will automatically pop up. Whereas otherwise you'll have texts and links that pop up. And these are literally like little hot links that you hover over. And it becomes this interactive uh, document. And you can add music, you can add all kinds of different things. But um, in the meantime, you'll notice that once it's done and I save it, then I can have my students go through here and they can learn on their own time as they will about Alexander Calder. And then once they've gone through this, then I can have them apply some of the principles that they've learned. Perhaps I want them to go ahead and create their own um, thing link that kind of synthesizes their own learning about fulcrums and balance and mathematics um, and how all of that works. So I'll have them create their own image and upload that and then find the different hot links and send me on a scavenger hunt. This is truly a great tool to utilize um, in a lot of different ways. You can empower your students through this and you can also use it as a great way to introduce a topic in your classroom in a way that might be different than you normally have done in the past. This really just touches on the surface of how you can use ThingLink. I like to kind of just give it in short bursts because I find that there's so much that you can do with it. You really just need the small tidbits here and there before you can kind of put it all together. So luckily, we're going to be having the opportunity to do that at the upcoming online winter STEAM conference. We have representatives from ThingLink who are going to be offering a demo during the conference itself. And um, I'm also going to be showing some ways that I utilize it in lesson planning, um, in presentation tools, and also in assessments, which is going to be really cool. I can't wait to do that for you. So if you haven't registered for the STEAM conference yet, go ahead and do so. Um, we are running out of Tinker Kits, mailed Tinker Kits, but we will have digital Tinker, tinker Kits available as well. Um, and lots of free giveaways. So ThingLink has a wonderful giveaway for all of our conference participants. I can't tell you what it is yet, but I'm just going to say that if you were excited about what you saw today, you're going to want to go ahead and register. Honestly, the, your registration fee is you're going to get that back plus at least double that amount. So um, go ahead and get that done so that we can go ahead and make sure that you have a valuable experience and that we can keep on giving you tips like this um, that you can take back to your classroom. Have a great week, everybody.